I created a risk score that combines several genes that we know are associated with Alzheimer's disease in a single metric. And then we looked at whether or not that metric is associated with hippocampal morphology. And we found that it is associated with thinning over time. We chose APOE, which is the strongest risk factor for Alzheimer's disease, and then CLU and PCOM, because they are also associated with hippocampal morphology, and family history, because that's a proxy for other genetic risk factors that we don't have an or, haven't already identified that are also associated with hippocampus. So we're finding that increased genetic risk for Alzheimer's disease in healthy individuals is associated with an increased rate of atrophy of the hippocampus over time, but it's not associated with baseline morphology of the hippocampus. And of course, we're interested in the hippocampus because it is one of the first regions affected by pathology in Alzheimer's disease. And so it's important, this distinction between um, genetic risk uh, affecting morphology at baseline or just in a, a cross-sectional cohort versus longitudinal thinning over time because that thinning process can either be associated with normal aging or uh, with the pathological process. And often in, in a pathological process, it is accelerated compared to normal aging. So if we can identify a connection between genetic risk for Alzheimer's disease, genes that have already been shown to be related to Alzheimer's disease, and hippocampal thinning rate, we may be able to identify people who are in the early phases of that increased rate of atrophy in the hippocampus indicating that Alzheimer's disease or cognitive impairment is in their future. And this is important because as people are working to develop treatments, it's becoming more and more apparent that if we wait until people are exhibiting clinical symptoms, that might not be the best time to intervene. It is probably better to intervene earlier in the course of the disease because we know there's a prodrome, a preclinical portion of the disease that is occurring before the clinical symptoms. So if we can stop the disease in its tracks before the development of symptoms, that is a better quality of life for patients over time. So it's, I'm working on one side of the problem, the identification of the people who need the treatment, and then there are people working on the other side of the problem and so many other people working all together. And the next step uh, would be to first uh, increase the cohort size, the number of people we're studying. Because we use a particularly um, high resolution and specific uh, imaging sequence to capture just the hippocampus and maximize our resolution in the in-plane space perpendicular to the longitudinal axis of the hippocampus, it's, a very, it's very difficult to then get that scan on many, many individuals because we can't pool data from multiple sites because it's what we're doing in our site. We actually um, are involved in some uh, new grants, starting some new grants, new work that will acquire that data on many, many more people, 1,200 people. So that's in the future. Um, also in the future is creating risk scores, genetic risk scores that include uh, more genes. We wanted to start here because we wanted to have a really strong hypothesis um, on which our genetic risk score was based. So only including genes and risk factors that have been associated with hip campus in the past. But we want to expand and look and see if we can um, better capture all that's known about the genetic underpinnings of Alzheimer's disease.